Hello there and welcome to today's video on germ theory. Today what we're going to be discussing is what makes you sick and how scientists over time gradually discovered that. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started shall we? So spontaneous generation. Living organisms arise from non-living matter. So back in the day they used to believe that toads, snakes, and mice could be born of moist soil flies from manure and maggots from decay. So what they meant was when they would go ahead and see an organism, for example, like a snake, the snake would normally be crawling around in the earth. So they'd be like, huh, I guess that means that snakes come from soil. Sounds right. However, a gentleman by the name of Francisco Reddy decided to try this theory of spontaneous generation. What he did was it was known that maggots were often found on rotting meat. So what he did here was he went ahead and took three jars. Each of them had rotting meat. A, he left the jar completely open. B, he went ahead and sealed the jar completely. And C, he put a cloth over top of the meat. And what he found was that on A, where the open jar was just kind of hanging out, that sure enough, there were maggots on the meat. Flies came down, laid the eggs, and the eggs hatched. B, where they had the tightly sealed lid, no, ma uh, no flies could get in to lay eggs, so there were no maggots found on the meat. And in C, the flies could clearly see the meat, they could smell it, so they would go ahead and land on the cloth and lay their eggs upon the cloth. However, if spontaneous generation was true, there should have been maggots on all three pieces of meat, which there weren't. So, this went ahead and helped disprove spontaneous generation. So, the alternative to this was biogenesis whereas life comes from pre-existing life. And considering what we know about the cell theory of cells coming from pre-existing cells, we know that this is more likely how things happen. This also led to the discovery of something known as the germ theory, which is that sickness and disease are caused by microorganisms, not curses or anything of that nature. So bacteria, viruses, protists, and fungi can all go ahead and carry some type of pathogenic sickness. Infectious disease. So, where does it come from? In the past, like we said, it, people believe that it came from curses, evil spirits, or even bad-smelling vapors. Which is pretty out there, but hey, you know, it's a different time. In the present day, we know that disease can be inherited, so it can be passed on from generation to generation. For example, hemophilia, or an inability to go ahead and clot blood. It can come from your environment. So, for example, cigarette smoke. Carcinogens can go ahead and help cause disease or sickness. Biotic agents, so living things such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protists, can also go ahead and help spread disease and sickness. Now, I know that, yes, it's biotic agents, bio-meaning life, and viruses are in there, but you know what I mean. It's something that can go ahead and help spread disease. So these are what we call pathogens. A pathogen is any disease-causing agent or something that could make you sick. So pathogen makes you sick. A gentleman by the name of Robert Koch developed a set of postulates or steps to determine the cause of disease. So Koch's postulates were, back in the day he noticed that a rat had died. So what he did was he looked inside the blood of the rat and found the bacteria Bacillus anthracis or the anthrax bacteria. So what he did was he went ahead and isolated that microbe. After he went ahead and isolated it, in step two, he grew the bacteria in a culture, so he had a fresh strain of Bacillus anthracis, or the anthrax bacteria. Step three is to go ahead and see what would happen. He injected this live strain of bacteria into a healthy host, in this case a rat. A couple of days went by, sure enough, number four, the rat died. And what he did was he looked inside the blood, and sure enough, he found the anthrax bacteria, the same one that killed the first rat, alive and thriving inside the blood of the second rat. So, he did this a few more times until he successfully determined that Bacillus anthracis, the anthrax bacteria, was the cause of anthrax poisoning. Another scientist of note was Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur is known for the pasteurization process, which simply means that if you go ahead and heat treat a liquid, or heat it up, that goes ahead and kills off most of the microbes or all the microbes found inside. 
So this, if you ever go ahead and look at the side of a thing of uh, orange juice or milk, and it says pasteurized, that doesn't mean that they grew in a pasture. What that means is that this liquid was gone ahead and uh, treated with heat before it was given to you to go ahead and kill off any microbes that might be found. He also helped further the disproving of spontaneous generation with a little experiment he did with an S-shaped flask. What he did was went ahead and... Um, affixed an apparatus to the flask that allowed air out but nothing in. So what he found was, if you look at step number one here, he went ahead, applied heat to the liquid, killed off any bacteria inside it, let the flask sit, and sure enough no bacteria was found there. In his second one, he went ahead, applied heat to the liquid to kill off all the bacteria, removed the neck, which stopped the air from coming in, let it sit for a bit, and sure enough, bacteria were found. And in step number three, what he did was went ahead, heated the uh, liquid up, killed off all the bacteria, tilted the flask sideways, and let it sit, and sure enough, he found bacteria present. Now, after this was said and done, he would go ahead and heat the liquid again, and kill off all the bacteria found inside. Now, using Koch's postulates, he also found the cause of rabies, chicken cholera, and the cause of anthrax in sheep. Another scientist whose discoveries were extremely vital in the methods of germ theory and infectious disease was Edward Jenner, who went ahead and developed the first vaccine for smallpox by going ahead and inoculating his patients with cowpox. So what he found was if an individual was infected with cowpox, they could not be infected with smallpox. So Edward Jenner is credited with discovering the first vaccine. So ways that disease can spread. The first is from person to person, via coughing, physical touch, or even sneezing. So an example of this includes the common cold, the mumps, and the measles. Ways to prevent this includes washing your hands and covering your mouth when you cough or sneeze. So go ahead and do the Batman sneeze. Bring your cape around you and then sneeze into your elbow. That's right, I said that. Also, wash your hands, come on man, it's a, con it's a very common courtesy. A very deadly form of person-to-person -person disease transmission are sexually transmitted diseases, or STDs. Some of the most dangerous pathogens are spread from person-to-person -person via sexual contact. These infect millions and kill thousands each year in the USA alone. So, bacteria can go ahead and cause STDs such as syphilis, which can be fatal, as well as gonorrhea and chlamydia, which can severely damage reproductive ability if not taken care of. Viruses can go ahead and cause hepatitis B and C, as well as genital herpes, and probably the most deadly of all, HIV or AIDS. The second method of going ahead and stopping the spread of disease and sickness is the use of contaminated food and water. So, a great way to go ahead and prevent this is, undercooked meats and non-pasteurized liquids can often contain bacteria, parasites, and other sickness makers and pathogens. Ways to prevent this are the properly cooking of meats, washing of hands of food workers, or anybody cooking in general, and the sanitation of water or boiling it, pasteurizing it, before you go ahead and drink it. So, for example, undercooked meat, specifically, can go ahead and carry the eggs of parasites, such as tapeworms, which will go ahead and, once inside the human body, will hatch, latch onto your intestines, and start to feed off whatever is coming through. However, if you properly cook the meat to the uh, corresponding temperature, that will go ahead and harmlessly kill off the eggs before they can hatch. Also, there are a wide variety of different bacteria and microbes that live inside water, especially bodies of water such as ponds, lakes, streams. So even if you're extremely thirsty, never go ahead and dip your head into one and start drinking without boiling the water first. Boiling will go ahead and assure that you kill off all the bacteria prior to drinking it. And also, please wait until the liquid is no longer boiling before you drink it. You'll thank me later for that. The final type is through infected animals. So infected animals are known as vectors. So these are animals that carry disease-causing organisms from person to person. Some examples include ticks, which carry Lyme's disease, as well as mosquitoes, which carry malaria and West Nile. Ways to prevent this from spreading include limiting your exposure, so if you must go ahead and walk in tall grass or other areas where these uh, vectors are known to inhabit, make sure you're wearing protective tight clothing. Also, the spraying of insecticides or bug spray will also help uh, lower your chances of running into these individuals. 
Now, if you do go ahead and find yourself with one of these sicknesses or diseases, there are ways to go ahead and fight it off. The most effective method is the use of antibiotics. So antibiotics go ahead and kill off bacteria without harming the cells of humans or other animals. So antibiotics only kill bacteria. They go ahead and leave other cells, for example, human tissue, things of that nature, completely alone and only attack the bacteria. The first of these that was ever discovered was penicillium, which was actually made from a fungus. Now, penicillium interfe uh, interferes with the synthesis of bacterial cell walls. What we mean by that is imagine the bacterial cell as a house. And what penicillin does is goes through and takes out all the nails, screws, fasteners, and bolts from the house. Now, without those screws and bolts, the house isn't going to be very stable and it will actually collapse in on itself. So what that does to the bacteria is causes the cell wall to go ahead and falter, meaning that nothing is keeping the bacterial cell in its shape anymore. So it just kind of oozes out all over the place and, well, dies. Now, that was needlessly graphic. Anyway, that's going to go ahead and close up the shop on germ theory and the spread of infectious disease. If you have any questions, please go ahead and co uh, contact your instructor. They'll point you in the right direction and help alleviate any confusion. Now, once again, now that this video is over, thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Until the next video, you all take care.